Yo, what's going on everybody? I am Omar and I'm here to help you figure things out. All right, so I know you got your red, you got your red Komodo. This is so cool. I got a red for the first time. Um, you know, we got a we got the um, non-proprietary uh, media that you can buy, CFast cards, right? So CFast cards supposedly are inexpensive, but for people like me, they're really not that inexpensive. I mean, if you want to get 500 gigs, which is probably what you'll need to start with shooting 6K raw, um, you're going to be spending around $500. So it's about a dollar a gig. <laughs> I don't understand why cards cost this much. Of course, somebody's gonna make a comment and tell me why they're so expensive, but I feel like it's a bunch of baloney. I'm gonna spend $500 on a freaking card. Like, are you serious, dude? Um, yeah, I feel like it's overpriced, way overpriced, especially since you're paying, you know, around six grand for the camera. You know, you gotta buy the lens. If you don't have lenses, then you gotta buy the batteries, which I have red approved batteries, which are Canon BP 975s, which they're, $200 or over $200 a pop. Um, so yeah, you're spending a lot of money. So here comes the silicone power CFast card that I got. This is the box. This isn't the CFast card. Um, silicone power is actually a brand that I've used for uh, hard drives, external, external hard drives, and they work perfectly fine. So yeah, so I ended up picking up one of these for a 128 gig CFast card. It's only 79, 89 or around 80 bucks. 80 freaking dollars for 128 gig card now the same storage for the in the sandus brand you're spending 200 around 280 dollars for 128 gigs freaking insane right so um what i did was i bought this the silicone power 128 gig um just to test it out because i thought about hey let me get a 512 um the 512 gig is gonna cost around 280 dollars which is crazy basically um you know almost half the price of you know a red approved cfast media but i was like hey let me test out the silicone power the you know the 128 gig see how see how it performs and in my test the short film or the short film test that i did called nothing happens not really that much of a short film really more of a low light camera test it worked perfectly fine in medium quality red code raw 6k so I shot it in 6K, I think 17 by nine, red code raw, medium quality. So flawlessly, no drop frames, worked perfectly well. That being said, uh, if I try to bump it up to high quality, red code raw, there were drop frames, it didn't let me record. I, I started recording like three or four seconds in and it dropped frames. Um, I also tried to do medium quality, uh, 6k at 49 mm -hmm. point something like 50 frames a second like a little slow-mo action drop frames so um, this card is good for medium quality red code raw work flawlessly low quality I'm sure to work too um, I didn't try low quality but low quality is a you know it's a lower resolution so mm -hmm. common sense says it will work but if you're trying to do high quality stuff uh, yeah this isn't gonna work so not good for high quality, not good for, uh, for, for, uh, for slow-mo. So would I recommend this? I would only recommend it if you're doing medium quality and that's it. For me, honestly, I probably will return it. Um, I'm gonna be filming a feature film next year. I'm a DP on a, on a feature film next year that, you know, I'm gonna be shooting high quality. So I'm gonna be shooting high quality so this is kind of like a waste, you know, um, but that's not your only cheap option or, or let me correct that. That's not your only least expensive option. I, before I owned this camera, I've owned many other cameras. I've owned uh, the Ursa Mini Pro where I basically had a CFast card like adapter thing that went into a hard drive. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to test that out. And so I did. So um, what I ended up doing was I got here a StarTech, uh, it's basically a SSD enclosure, right? 
And then what you do is you put a SSD, which I chose the Samsung Evo 860 SSD, and I put it inside of the enclosure. Okay, and what you get is this. So this little StarTech thing here is one terabyte. Okay, so for one terabyte, if you're trying to get a one terabyte CFast card, you're gonna be spending around a thousand dollars. Ouch! One grand on a freaking card. So in comes this. For one terabyte SSD plus this enclosure, you're gonna spend around 150 to 160. And you can even spend less than that because the enclosure costs around $35, which I'll put a link in the description. And then um, the um, the SSD was 120, but you can find an SSD for one, a one terabyte for around 100 bucks. I chose Samsung Evo uh, just because I have better reviews and blah blah blah. So, with a combined $160, you have one terabyte. Cool. Okay, one terabyte. Um, I'm not sure. I forgot what the data rate is, but I know 128 gig for me it was like 12 minutes. Um, so you can get pretty much like an hour. You'll get an hour of footage with one terabyte at medium quality. I'm not sure high quality, um, possibly. So yeah, so you get this thing and then, so 165 right here. And then you gotta spend another like $50 or so on this cable here, which is a CFAS uh, to, um, I forgot what this little port is, but it fits in here. I think it's eSATA or something like that. And it goes in here. So you put this sucker in here, which in the B-roll, if you're looking at it right now, you'll see what I'm doing. You slam it on there and it doesn't work. <laughs> what I mean is it works, um, but you, you, you need to plug in the battery. So that's the only thing that's annoying. So when I first plug this in, uh, you know, with the CFast card and the SSD uh, enclosure thing with SSD in it, um, I plugged it in the red here and it didn't, it didn't work. And so I was like, what's going on? And then I forgot there's another thing that you need to do. This is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm thinking about returning it. Um, you need to basically power the, the drive. So you have this cable here and you have this cable here sticking out here and then you need to power it. So I ended up getting, you know, like one of those battery banks to power it. So I have, <laughs> so unless if you have a V-mount battery, and that's one of the reasons why I guess I forgot. Um, when I had my Earth Mini Pro, I had a V-mount battery that had a USB port on the battery that I can just plug it in. Because basically it powers, um, the enclosure here powers by via USB. So um, the batteries that I have, which are the Canon batteries that are approved by RED, don't have a USB connection that I can plug it in to power it. And that's one of the reasons why right now I'm debating. Um, so, but before I get into my debating here, um, when I when I powered it, when I powered it with the battery pack, I plugged in the CFAS card, it was like a mess here. It worked. It worked in, um, in HQ, worked at medium Q, uh, MQ, HQ, quality, high quality, medium quality, raw, and it worked in slow-mo, so for slow motion, this sucker worked, no drop frames at all. Um, so that's a, a very inexpensive alternative. Um, that being said, I mean, it's like a mess. I mean, you gotta get this cable here, that cable here. Uh, you got this, I don't, I don't even know where to put this on top of the camera, um, which you'll see in the B-roll. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, I, 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 don't, I still don't know what to do. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I want to return it. I'm debating on whether to return it or not because I don't want it to be a mess. I mean, you know, you got, you have this here, you know, and then you got the battery pack here. Then you got all these cables here. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of a mess. You know, I was going to Velcro uh, the, I was going to Velcro the, the, the hard drive to the batteries and then maybe Velcro the battery to the hard drive. Maybe it's manageable. But it's still, you got a lot of cables going on and you got this freaking blue thing sticking out of here. Um, I mean, I thought about like maybe gaff taping this black, you know, and, and maybe putting it in the back here. But it's just still like so much stuff going on. And I don't know, like I'm the type of, I'm the type of person, you know, when I'm, when I'm going to see a client, you know, I like, I like this, I like my stuff to look pretty cool, you know, and, and nice and, and tidy and neat and, 
you know, when, when you have, um, you know, all these cables everywhere and, you know, maybe it could look cool. I know in, in feature film sets, you know, on, on huge sets, there's a bunch of cables coming out of the camera, video village or whatever. Um, but I like my setup nice and clean for the most part. I mean, I already have, you know, one cable here for the Rode mic. And then I have another cable here for the SDI cable for the small HD monitor. So I just didn't want to have all these cables and I don't know, it's just like a mess. And then on top of that, it's like, I got to worry about now charging the battery every, every time before a shoot. So I got the battery and make sure that's plugged in. And then I got, it's just like so much stuff already that obviously is so much easier to be like, all right, you know, I got to see fast, pop that sucker in here and then I'm good to go, you know? So obviously it's a lot easier than having this set up, but you know, you're going to be spending, um, you know, a, a lot less. I mean, a fraction of the cost we're talking here, maybe $200, you know, with the cable and everything, uh, a little over $200 and you have one terabyte. Okay. So instead of spending five times that amount and buying, you know, or more than five times that amount and buying a, a, a CFAS card. Now, that being said, if you could afford it, whatever, you probably are not even watching this video. But dude, I mean, if you're saving that much money, you're saving, you know, around $800 where you can buy a lens, um, you can buy like four more Canon batteries, you can buy a nicer monitor, a nicer mic, better lights. I mean, there's just so much other stuff that you can buy versus spending freaking $1,000 on a CFAST card. And so that's why I wanted to do this video. I'm trying to help out those people that, you know, got the red Komodo because they could afford it. Uh, and maybe right now they're, they're like, crap, you know, um, what do I do with media? Or maybe there's people that are thinking about the Komodo and they're like, man, I can't afford the, maybe I can afford the camera, but I can't afford the media. Um, but you can. Uh, so there is a workaround. Um, I, I hope this helped you out. Um, I'm gonna be maybe doing more, more of these videos um, I mean, I'm no Gerald Undone. He's a beast. At, he's a beast at this. Um, or Caleb from um, DSLR Video Shooter. I think this his thing. I mean, he's awesome. I'm not one of those guys, but hey, like I'm trying to help those people that are really, you know, trying to spend spend less least amount of money um, on that. So hopefully that helped you. But I'm gonna do more tests. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for uh, like another inexpensive CFAS card to see if that works and I'll let you guys know but until then thanks for watching stay tuned for the next video I'm gonna do another camera test and more videos so hit that subscribe button let's freaking go